These sculptures can soar several stories high and seem to defy gravity. Particularly considering they're made entirely of sand. Everyone who has ever been on the beach played in their sandbox. You know what sand can do. You've touched the sand, played with the sand. To take sand and to be able to make a ginormous work of art, it's incredible. Incredible indeed. So much so, there's an entire museum dedicated to this art form in the western Japanese city of Totori. Professional sand sculptor Sue McGrew came all the way from Seattle. One thing that's interesting about sand is just trying to find how far back you can cut it without it actually falling off. We found McGrew putting the finishing touches on her rendition of the fall of the Berlin Wall for this German-themed exhibition, showcasing in sand Bach, Einstein, even the Brothers Grimm. McGrew has no formal training. These are my tools. And even improvises with her implements. This is actually a horse brush. A fork creates texture. A feather duster smooths it all out. The most challenging part for all of these designers is dealing with gravity. You're down here on your hands and knees working on somebody's boot and you're looking up and you're thinking, please don't fall. <laughs> please don't fall, please don't fall. Because Jill Harris, another American, usually just calls herself a sculptor, omitting the word sand, unless she's ready for a slew of questions. Do you mix anything with it? Is it really only sand and water? Uh, how do you get it to stay up? And, and I the think answers that's, are? It's only sand and water. The secret is compaction. These sculptures, which harden as they dry, start as a giant block of sand. We'll take an entire day to pack a block like this with jumping jack compactors and water. You're forcing those grains to lock together. She's been at it for 19 years and showed us these time-lapse videos. The key to it all, Harris says, is getting the right sand. Beach sand does not work so well. Because if you think as the ocean as a giant rock tumbler, all those little grains are rolling around and they're round. So it's like stacking marbles, they just slide off. And sand from a quarry, or that's been on a dune and away from the surf, has, uh, they're still angular, so when you pack them together, they'll lock together. That's what makes Totori so ideal. We visited its giant sand dunes on an unseasonably chilly day this spring. Complete with camels brought in for tourists, the scene is more Sahara than small town Japan. Katsuhiko Chayan, credited with introducing sand sculpting to Japan, told us, The city of Totori came to me and said, We've got this huge sand dune. Can you help us do something with it to draw tourists? Nine years ago, he created this museum of sand, which brings in guest sculptors, including Sue McGrew. Isn't there something fundamentally frustrating or depressing about this? Ultimately, this sculpture, all of your work will go away. I love that aspect, the ephemeral aspect of sand sculpting. It's like a Thanksgiving dinner, you know? How like so? where you get together with friends. It's the experience of making the food and eating it. You don't want to keep the meal for ever and just look at it, right? You want to make it and enjoy it. And that's basically sand sculpting. Its fleeting beauty is by design.